Hello, humans, and welcome back to the After the Lions podcast, the show where we talk about creativity, introversion, and how to stay wildly functional in a distracted world. I'm your host slash friendly neighborhood extraterrestrial, Andrew Fultz, and in this episode, I'm going to talk about how to outthink your depression and unlock your creativity with a really simple exercise called the better blank. Hope you guys enjoy this one, and I'll see you on the other side. July 2011. Let me tell you about the rock bottom of my depression. It's not binge watching Lost for 12 hours straight or lying paralyzed on my bed or being so socially catatonic that my friend literally had to wave his hand in front of my face to make sure I was still conscious. Nope, my rock bottom is a five word sentence. I was walking along a canal path with my mom, mostly in silence, which was my MO at that point. And she suddenly broke down. She asked me in this almost begging voice, what can I do to help? Flatly, I replied, there's nothing you can do. This is the breaking point for me because even through the fog, I could see that I was no longer just a sinking ship. I was emptiness, sucking the joy out of everything, dragging others down into my depths. I was the void and I had to get better. Fast forward to 2017 and I was going to therapy for the second time. I was more or less a functioning human being by then, but creative block was still a daily struggle. The number one side effect was running out of things to say. I was literally terrified to go to my appointments because my mind would go spontaneously blank at the worst times. I'd stare desperately upwards thinking, line, as if the ceiling tiles were going to rescue me from therapy stage fright. To her credit, my therapist, Sam, which isn't her real name, didn't bail me out. She took the awkwardness like a pro until my brain rebooted. Eventually, I couldn't take the stress anymore, so I wrote a list of 20 things to talk about. I brandished it in my next session like, fuck you, depression, let's see you make this disappear. After going through the last bullet point, I looked up at Sam with this hopeful expression on my face like, is that time? And then she smiles at me and she's like, no, that was 10 minutes. I'm like, fuck. (laughs) The next week I came back with 40 bullet points, then 50, then 60. But no matter how much I prepared, depression would just squash my thoughts down like a trash compactor. I had the same problem with writing, design, and conversation. My brain would simply not allow me to be creative. It was like I weighed 10,000 pounds. I wanted a mile and depression would barely give me an inch. One session, I was blanking per usual, so I closed my eyes and tried to wring conversation out of my brain like an existential sponge. What do you see? Sam asked. Nothing, I say, just blankness. Then a tiny thought popped into my head. Blankness is dark, and the ocean is dark, and whales move through the ocean, and then they come to the shore, and at the shore is a beach, and the beach is happiness. Suddenly, it occurred to me that even nothing is connected to something. It's like the mind is circular. There are no dead ends. What I learned that day is that my depression had nothing to do with inspiration or motivation. It was like my thoughts got stuck on the concept of emptiness because I had traded the word and for the word but. In other words, my mental muscles were weak and the only solution was to practice. So I invented this little game called the UG rule. Every time I felt mental resistance to doing a task, like washing the dishes or going for a walk, I did that thing instantly. In the three years since I started living by the UG rule, I've never been depressed. I went through hard times for sure, but it was impossible to get stuck for long because I knew that dead ends are an illusion. But what does washing the dishes have to do with creativity? So J.K. Rowling didn't need a publishing deal to write Harry Potter. She started with a paper napkin. Ideas appeared in her head and she acted on them over and over and over until she created an entire universe. She made a habit out of saying and, not but. If you're struggling with depression right now, the best remedy is to simplify your life. You don't need to be diagnosed. You don't need drugs. You don't need therapy. You don't need to find your purpose in life yet. You just need to fix your inputs and your outputs. So here's three steps to help with that. Step number one, stop clinging. Marijuana, Netflix, news, Facebook, inspiration sites, 
these are all things you can cling to, but they won't make you happy. I mean, you can believe me because I've tried. In fact, these things don't want you to be happy. The more miserable you are, the more passive you become. And the more passive you become, the easier you are to manipulate. So make a list of 10 things you did today and write active or passive next to each one. As a rule of thumb, you should aim for 80% active and 20% passive. If you're depressed right now, those numbers are probably reversed, to be honest. So it's like you see the problem. Life is a casino, and if you keep playing by other people's rules, the house will suck you dry eventually. Step number two, so take three steps forward. It can take two months or more to form a habit, but I'll do you one better. By taking three positive actions, you can cause your brain to recognize a pattern within a few minutes. A pattern is a direction. When you start chaining actions together, your brain thinks, huh, we seem to be heading towards something. Once you get this initial momentum going, each consecutive action gets easier. So here's an example to try. Uh, number one, wash the dishes. Number two, reorganize your desk. Number three, go for a walk. And then number four, keep doing stuff. So step number three in this process is to practice instant action. It's impossible to cure your depression because that's just too fuzzy as a goal. How do you know when you've been cured? Sounds pretty depressing to me, honestly. A better approach is to focus on the simple daily practice of keeping your thoughts connected to action. I wash the dishes as soon as I use them, and it's become so automatic that it can feel like having my own personal assistant. Wait, I don't remember taking out the trash. When did I do that? The key to happiness is focusing on one ug at a time. As depression lifts, your thoughts will start to flow into action like you poured a can of DW40 over your brain. It's an amazing feeling. So what's your chain? What three actions could you take right now to get back in the driver's seat in life? Let me know in the comments on Medium. You can find the link to this article below in the description. And as for my chain this morning, I went on a walk in the woods, played with my neighbor's puppy, and sat down to write a blog post. So stay ug-free, my friends, and I'll catch you next time.